Hello everyone. So um, this video is about projectile motion uh, using trig. So this is going to be right with uh, the equation that you're going to need to predict uh, where your bead is going to land uh, given it a certain angle. So this is these are the example problems for our project before we actually start working with our device. So. I want to make sure that people have these two equations written down. So the first equation is the change in distance vertically, or the y, is uh, the tangent of the angle times x. Again, x is that distance that we're looking for. Minus g, which is gravity, over 2 times our initial velocity squared, times the cosine of that angle squared, all in front of the x squared. Again, it's a quadratic equation, so we need an x squared, we need an x, and we need a c value. Our c value is going to be that change in y. And so that we have it, this is a special case that we're going to be using to predict our initial velocity for our device, uh, where it's the initial velocity equals the square root of negative g okay, which is again that uh, gravity, uh, x squared over 2y. So those are our two equations that we need to have our notes on. So the examples that we're going to give here is a marble um, is shot at a 30 degree angle with our initial velocity as 0.9 meters per second from a uh, 2 meter high shelf. How far will the marble travel? So how far, again, is that x value? So we're going to start by plugging in the numbers into our equation. So again, our angle is not 0, and we're not looking for the initial velocity. This is a special case. Generally, in our project, we are only focusing on this equation right here. Okay? So we need to make sure that we're using that. And that this change in y, because the bead is getting shot and then falling uh, at a lower level, that change in y or that distance is always negative. Um, you can think of this piece as my c value. So if I move it up, if I move this to the other side and made this equal to zero, it's going to be, become my c value, so it's going to be a plus because I'm moving it high. Um, but in this case, I'm going to plug it in as a negative height. So it's uh, negative 2 equals my tangent of 30 times x minus 9.8 the acceleration of gravity over 2 times my initial velocity squared, 0.9 squared, times my cosine of my angle, which is 30 squared, x squared. So again, the x's and the y's I'm not plugging anything into, uh, or the x's I'm not plugging anything into because it's going to take the form of a quadratic. So I plug this into the calculator. I get a decimal. Negative 2 equals 0.57735x. When I'm dealing with trig values, the more decimal places you have, the more accurate your prediction is going to be. And now I'm just plugging in. I would do PEMDAS here. So I'm going to look at the bottom. I'm going to square both of these. Okay. First, I'm going to evaluate the cosine of 30. So I'm going to leave this over 2 times 0.9 squared is 0.81. The cosine of 30 is 0 0.8660 squared. I don't have to touch this at all. So that's still negative 2 equals 0.57735x minus 9.8 over 
2 times 0.81. Now, what I did was when I did the cosine of 30, I got this big long decimal. And then I just hit the squared button on my calculator. And uh, what comes up is actually 0.75. Your calculator will actually store many of those values. So you actually don't have to change anything in the calculator. You could, if you're squaring that, that answer, then you just hit squared after it, and it's a more accurate measure. Now I can multiply all these numbers together. So your negative 2 equals 0.57735x minus 9.8 over 2 times 0.8 over. I multiplied all those together, and I get 1.215x squared. I then divide those out. Negative 2 equals 0.57735x minus, now my answer turns out to be 8.0658x squared. That is my quadratic. I have some numbers in front of my x squared and my x and uh, this. So now I'm going to do my solve, which remember to solve, I have to set everything equal to zero. So I'm just gonna move the two over. So my final result for my equation is going to be zero equals 0.57735x minus 8.0658x squared plus 2. That is the final equation for my quadratic. Because to solve anything, I need it equal to 0. Now, we're going to be doing two steps with this. We're actually going to be taking this and plugging it into the quadratic formula. And we're going to be using uh, the graphing calculator. So, what you need to do is you need to take out the graphing calculator and open a new graph and graph this function. What will come up, and you can type it in however you want, just remember to put the x's in there as the variables and x squared, otherwise it won't show up. Now, what will happen is you'll get a graph like this. And it's really hard to see. Now we're looking for where it's going to hit uh, the ground. So we're looking for when it crosses the x-axis, or otherwise known as the zeros or the roots. Now, this is very tight. And what you want to do is you want to zoom in. Okay. So to do that, you go to Menu, Window Zoom, Zoom In. And you, this says, where do you want the center to be? Well, I want it to be centered around the origin. So I know that's approximately where it is. It blows up the graph. So now I can definitely tell my zero is somewhere over here, my zero is somewhere over there. To find the zero uh, in the graph and calculator, I go to Menu, I go to Analyze Graph, and I hit zero. This little thing called lower bound will pick up and you'll have this hand. Well really all you need to do is you need to click and then drag this over until uh, magically you see this zero thing pop up and it'll give you a point. That point is your answer. Now this one is point three five three five. Well I've already done this here. I have this point and this point are uh, negative 0.463. Well, the problem is, this is a real life situation. A bead is getting shot up and over. Okay? Doesn't make sense to use this negative piece. It, I'm going to just choose the positive result. So, this is the model of what the bead would look like going through. So I'm going to shoot it from up here, and it's going to fall, and it's going to hit the ground right there. And that's where we're going to actually put our target when we're doing this project. Now, for the next equation that I gave you, this is going to be your practice equation.
All right, uh, so I want you guys to try to do the same thing that I just did in the previous example here. Try to find the equation and then uh, graph the equation for a PDN next class. Now, I did want to discuss this equation. I want to give you another example of how to do this. So, again, I'm going to use that, that change in y or that, that vertical distance formula. Uh, and now the marble is shot horizontally, meaning that the marble is shot this way, just and then it's falling. Okay, so so the graph is going to look like it's going to go. Okay, um, so it's still a parabola; it's just kind of a very tight one. So that means that the angle is zero. Kind of makes things a little bit easier, but I still follow through the same process. Um, initial velocity is 1.1 meters squared, and it is 0.6 meters high. So we still have to predict where that marble is going to hit the ground. So I start putting negative 0.6, again that y, okay, um, equals the tangent of zero. Remember, I have to plug that into the calculator. It's a function of x minus 9.8 over 2 times my initial velocity squared, my cosine of 0 squared, x squared. Now, what's great about this is the tangent of 0, when I plug it into the calculator, it's actually 0. So, it's 0 times x, which is just going to drop away, because that whole thing is 0. Minus 9.8 over 2 times my initial velocity squared. 1.1 squared is 1.21. My cosine of 0 turns out to be 1. So I have to plug that cosine of 0 in, it comes out to be 1. Now I can square this, well, 1 squared is just 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip that step, I'm just going to multiply these. So I got negative 0.6, again this is going to drop away, equals, this minus sign stays, 9.8 over 2.42 x squared. Well. Now I can divide these, negative uh, 4.0496x squared. Now I can take this, this is a quadratic still because it has the x squared. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to treat that as my c, my initial height, or my y-intercept if you remember that. Um, so this is going to be 0 equals negative 4.0496 squared plus 0.6. Now I can graph this equation right here. So this is my new equation for here. Now when I go back to my graph calculator and I go to my fourth graph here, okay, this is my graph. Again, it's very tight to that axis, so it's very hard to see. So I'm going to, again, zoom in on the axis, and you can see the bead gets shot and it immediately starts falling. I can then find where these things are, and they turn out to be at 0.385 and negative 0.385. But again, I don't care about the negative piece because it's a real life situation. The bead is not falling backwards distance, it's falling forward. So that's how you do those examples. I'll tell you right now that my answer to the second one is going to be point. 231, 0.231, this is the graph that you should do. Um, and please try those equations and come in with any questions. 
I want to start testing our rig tomorrow. Thank you.